This is my first time making a video like this, and I'll be giving you a full tour of my animal room. Needless to say, I've been looking forward to making this video for a while now. Not only will I be introducing you guys to my collection of ants, tarantulas, roaches, and other various creepy crawlies, but I'll also be showing you some crazy tarantula feedings. So stay tuned for that. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy your journey through my animal universe. Here in this corner, I keep all of my feeders and ice pods in these plastic tubs with a 6 metre heating cable, providing extra warmth for them. Now, at some point in the future, I am planning to create a natural terrarium for each of these, potentially even mixing some of the species, like the Doobie Roaches, Madagascan Roaches, and Superworms. Let me know what you think, and of course, some better looking enclosures for the ice pods. However, that's all for the future, so time for the tour. And on today's menu for the animals of my room, I have lettuce, potato, apple, orange and some dry cat food. I always like to feed them a very varied diet as I believe it's our duty as the keeper of the animals to make sure they have the best conditions available. Now, the first inhabitants are these mealworms. They're a very recent addition and so we're just kept in this temporary Tupperware container for now. But look at how ravenous they are. Creepy but captivating. Keeping on the trend of worms, I also have superworms, mainly used as a feeder for the various ant colonies that I keep, but also sometimes for the tarantulas. Now, I am planning on breeding some of these superworms so that I no longer have to buy them. Look at these two in various stages of pupation. Like I mentioned earlier, I have a small colony of Madagascan hissing roaches, however, they're still young, so I'm not expecting any babies anytime soon. But these are cool because, as their name suggests, they can hiss. Just listen to that. I like to feed all my roaches on lettuce, apple, orange and dry cat food as by giving them a healthy and varied diet, you will also be giving your pets the highest quality food. Much like we, as humans, prefer to eat organic beef instead of beef from cows that are treated poorly. I also own some fruit beetle grubs, Pachinoda grubs and some of them have even begun to pupate. Let's see if you can spot them. Here's some up close. I think it's really cool how you can see the different substrates that they use to pupate. Here's an actual grub up close. You can see its inner organs working. How peculiar. Now for the cleanup crew. These guys keep the animal room running and help protect all my animals from dangerous moles. Let's try to find some under this leaf litter. No? Hmm. What about under this cork box? Yep, there they are. These are dairy cows and they really do remind me of miniature cows. I've also found that these isopod bins are perfect breeding grounds for springtails. Just look at how many there are. I also have a small colony of crystal white isopods. Just look at how pretty they are. These seem to hide all the time compared to the next colony though. Tropical orange isopods. These are smaller but there are way more of them and they're much more active. They've even started to breathe. Here's one of the babies on my finger for scale. How tiny! Now for my main two feeders. I use Doobie Roaches, which I got as tiny nymphs and slowly but surely they've been getting bigger and there should be babies coming in the next few months. And look at that freshly molted one walking across now. I also use Turkestan Roaches, or as they're also known, Red Runners, who breed like wildfire. Just look at all those uwu fika attached to the cardboard and on the base of the box. Look at this female here, laying another uwu fika. Now I also keep 6 tarantulas currently, but I'm planning on expanding at some point in the future. Here we have a Pseudoclamoris gigas, also known as an orange tree spider. However, she molted recently, and so isn't eating at the moment. Molting, for those of you that didn't know, is when a tarantula sheds its old skin to grow bigger, as shown in this clip. Many tarantula keepers like myself like to keep and preserve the molts. Here you can see the majority of the ones that I managed to save from the tarantulas destroying. Another inhabitant is this curly haired tarantula. She's the first inhabitant of my animal room and originally I thought she wasn't going to be super interesting as she's one of the most common tarantula species in the hobby but she's by far my favourite now. Let's try to feed her, dropping the roach in. And oops! She must not be hungry. Oh, look at how fast that roach moved. Now the next tarantula is an Ancoscordia geniculata, or a Brazilian stripney. 
Trying to feed her as well proved unsuccessful, probably because she molted fairly recently. Now, this Psalmea Sirminia tarantula molted just the other day, and so he's still hiding, but you can just about make out her toes there. This is probably the most dangerous animal currently in the animal room, Ahilobrahis discolus. It's an old world species and has the ability to incapacitate young children and the elderly. I always proceed with extra caution when I'm dealing with this species. Here, trying to lure her out with a juicy roach. And wham! Look at how fast she moved. Slowing it down, you can really see the blue coloration on her legs. What a shame that she loves hiding in her dirt burrow. The final tarantula that I own is a Chromatopelmisiana pubescens. Isn't she beautiful? And look at all that webbing. What a fortress she's made for herself. Now, I feel bad that none of my tarantulas ate on camera for you guys, so I came back a few days later and tried to get some better clips. Sit back and enjoy the show. Just look at this happy dance she's doing. Now she's actually just webbing the area around her to stop any ants and other invertebrates stealing it and to web the meal later. But as we tarantula keepers like to think, she's celebrating her meal. As for ants, I currently own a Fadoli pellidua colony and some of you may recognize them from this video here where I moved them into a white on nest. However, they suddenly had a big worker die off. So I moved them into this test tube where I could monitor the conditions better and they've had a few new workers arriving recently, so I'm hoping they recover. By far the biggest ant I own is this massive Mesorbarbarus queen, measuring in at a hefty 1.3cm long. She currently only has one worker, as these large ants have a very slow development rate. Now, the seeds there are actually chia seeds. The cool thing about these ants is that they very rarely eat insects or sugars. They get most of their nutrients from ant bread that they make from seeds. How cool! If you look closely here, you can actually see a discarded shell of a seed that the queen or worker must have chewed up to make some of that delicious ant bread. I wonder what it tastes like, don't you? Now, the next few ants are all currently in hibernation, where they slow down for the coming winter. This here is a former Kafuska colony with a massive number of queens, 16 in total. These ants are what are called polygynous, and so can have multiple queens in their colonies. Quite a cool trait if you ask me. Currently housed in this all-in-one white tongue ant nest that I made. However, I plan to move them out in the spring as they have moved out of the intended space and it doesn't suit their needs quite right. I believe they've burrowed some place in the sand and I suspect that this is their entrance here. Housed in this white tongue nest that I also made myself, I have a small colony of European fire ants, Myrmica rubra. I really love this colony as they're always active, well at least in summer, and just look at them swarm that drop of honey. Now, I'm not too certain what this queen is, I suspect a Lassius species. She was collected earlier this year, but still hasn't had any workers hatch, so I'm unsure if she's fertile, but I'll continue to provide her with the best care, and let her enjoy this drop of honey. Now this test tube here is a small colony of Lassius nigerans, the queen with the first generation of workers, known as Ninitix. They seem a bit confused by the food, so let's leave them to it. Now moving on from the animals, I also have some moss boxes, which I made in this video here. Although I have increased the size of the boxes, as I now have a higher demand for moss in my builds. As for my past terrariums, they're all doing really well, and I don't have too much to say about them. I'll keep you guys updated if anything interesting happens in the future with them though. Now, for those of you that are interested, here you can see an IKEA trolley which I bought second hand and I find it's really useful for general storage of things that I use often and to keep all my tools. Also, here's another IKEA shelf where I keep all of my tarantulas, substrates and an old terrarium. This is also where most of my videos are filmed, however I'm planning on making it a little more practical in the future, stay tuned for that. 
One last piece of information is that I actually have another ant colony arriving this week. However, I think they deserve their own video and so you guys can expect that in the coming weeks. This style of video again is new to me, so let me know if you like it or not. Thank you so much for watching and see you next week. Thank you.